Yeah, well said. And that kind of um, puts me on my next topic here. So we're, we're finally done, by the way, I've already in the armor screen. If you're getting tired of staring at that, uh, feel free to exit that. We're basically done with that. I'm going to be talking a bit, of, uh, a couple of SKL specific things next uh, for our armory policy. Um, the very first one is going to be, if you use it, uh, recraft it. You know, we have a, a set number of, of things that we'd like to have in our armory. Um, and I'll kind of go over very quickly of what that stock is supposed to be. Um, we also have a, a list of that on the SSGIL uh, Discord. Um, but as far as that policy goes, you know, if you use a heavy anvil, go right back into the uh, armory page and start another one. You know, it, we have a lot of people who use the armory and it's, you know, it's always frustrating when, when someone's ready to go use a heavy anvil and oh there's none there because you know too many people forgot to recraft or whatever so just be mindful of that you know we're not gonna we're not gonna get super upset with you and start sending a whole bunch of, of rage tells over it but keep it in mind there are a lot of people who use the armory and and that's why that policy is in place and uh, just keep in mind that it's not you know yes command two squads of skl head in xenotech labs generally best to use the armory Besides the anvils, like anvils you can use on your own. I would hold off on the heavy anvils too much, but armor usage is generally best while you're in a platoon and you're working towards something for the faction. We This is a huge outfit. We bring in a lot of resources. We do have a very full armory, but use it for your faction. Use it for your platoon, for the outfit. You know, use it for others. Don't just throw things around and try and be a little bit conscientious about it. Have extra ammunition here. Take some ammunition. For sure. All right, so yeah, that's that's you know the long and short of that policy. Um, as far as the other assets goes, this is kind of for the the hive lords and up, and uh, was part of the inspiration for this training. For all my hive lords, this is important. We have you know you have access to our orbitals, our citadel shields, our steel reins, um, and I'll have to check later, but I believe our colossus tank as well. Um, Can confirm. Wonderful. Okay. So, confirm Colossus tank for our high bloods and up. Um, that said, these assets are not, um, you know, stuff we use often, most often, especially for our orbital strikes. They are alert savers, um, you know, niche things. I, I never want to see anyone um, accidents occur, of course. We can all, every, every Swarm Lord Plus can tell you stories of, of accidentally dropping orbitals. But please, please, please intentionally do not drop orbitals. Um, unless necessary, and especially if you're not in a platoon or squad, you know, don't don't drop portals when you're just playing solo just for the sake of kills and such shit. You know, don't want to see that. Accidents happen, but try and uh, stay away from orbital strike. But and that goes as well for for the other assets. Orbital strike is a a um, nice example, but the the same applies for the other assets as well. And be conscientious when you are dropping your and and watch and make you're not dropping it on a building full of friendlies especially friendly maxes and if it's building full of enemy maxes and there's a few friendlies in there collateral damage but use it to the best advantage because they are expensive to craft and we can only have two of them at a time but just be aware of what they can do and, and what the cost is in is being dispensed okay so very last thing that I want to go over before we kind of get some practice in for our leadership here um, and for anyone in here who's a solo fit um, who kind of wants to practice along with us is our um, our armory stock and I'm gonna kind of just list out some numbers here you know to kind of give you an idea like I said that is uh, actually if you're on our SKL Discord and you're one of our officers, you can see our Armory discussion channel. And in the pins for that channel, you'll see uh, Game Rules has a post, um, our 3.0 module stock of what kind of the armory should roughly look like uh, at any given time. But that's going to look like uh, four heavy anvils. It's always nice to have a good amount of those. Around two medium heavy anvils. Uh, and then for the advanced stuff, for Hive Lords up, we'd like to have uh, one Steel Rain, you know, we'd have more, and I know they're fun, but just in uh, to keep other stuff up, we keep that low. 
Citadel shields, we have one of for the same reason. Orbital strikes, because they're, they're used slightly used more and are somewhat more effective in some cases, we keep them maxed at two if we can. And then the Colossus tank, uh, for the same reason as everything else, we have um, we have just one usually stock. That changes, all of these assets change depending on if there's an event or something. Maybe we have a, a event with an armor column and so we know we're going to be pulling multiple Colossi, so you know. We'll maybe dial back on the the orbital strikes a little bit and fill in more with um, colossi, if that makes sense. Okay, practice time. So if I can get everybody to look at the map screen. Real quick, of course, before we do practices, I just want to. Let everybody know, make sure everybody's clear on how we gain resources while you're in your map screen, since of course how do you go there? If you put your mouse over any of the hexes, you'll see at the bottom outfit resources, it'll tell you what you get from owning from capturing that hex. Just owning it doesn't give it. But if say we go to Quartz Ridge and we capture that, we get greenium from that. It comes in, we get that chunk of 25, and then we get a certain amount per minute that comes in. If you move to the base right above it, Lowland Trading Post. We get bluium from that. We get the chunk of three, plus we get a slow influx of bluium coming in. If you move your mouse over to the crown in the center of the map, that's the propoleum base. There's only one of those on every continent. We get the chunk of two, plus a little bit coming in per minute, if it's captured in Scale's name. If we're there and it's captured in another outfit's name, we still get a portion, but we don't get the constant supply coming in. A good tip as far as the bluium, the outside one minute capture points bring bluium. So here we've got Lowland Trading Post, over on the east side, Sunken Relay Station, at the south, Burgess Overlook, those bases bring in the Bluium. So it's a good thing to keep in mind. And when you're playing, when you're platoon leading, keep an eye on the armory. If you see we're low on certain resources, we're running very, very low, try and steer your platoon if possible, if it's not a huge disruption in what you're doing, to maybe capture Lowland Trading Post, just to get the Bluium flooding in. Keep an eye on things, be a little bit aware of, of what you're bringing in and, and what you're doing for the outfit. Keep those resources flowing because it keeps the armory rotating the way it should be. What determines the outfit that took the point? Is it just based on majority outfit? The it's the board. score there. Um, it's the, the, I think, the top X amount of performers with, I think, a thousand plus score or something. It's a whole scoring thing within it, which includes flipping the point and kills and revives and spawns and all this kind of stuff. It's the top scores that are on that base with the capture. 99 times out of 100, it's SKL if we've got a presence there, but sometimes it's not. Got it. Cool. Thanks. Yes, amp stations and tech plants and biolabs also get blue. But usually you're not so much fighting at those as you are at the outside bases. So they're in their quicker to cap too, the outside one point bases or one minute caps. So if it's possible to get those, go for it. Yes, guarding the point does not does not count. It's the original flip of the point when you're turning it to purple. That counts for the points. And yes, hit tab and you'll see who's on the scoreboard, on the top of the scoreboard. Can I ask a uh, odd question here? So, if you have a weight restriction and you have an item res restriction on all your different army items, does it make sense to have like secondary outfits so that you can kind of double up your weight and stuff like that? We talked about that once upon a time, shortly after the armory first came out, but it wasn't something that could be maintained because you can't share the resources across the board. And we all kind of want to play as an outfit. Um, it just, it wasn't something that could be re reasonably maintained with the population that we had. Going. This command, I got three squads heading to Scar Mesa. So, theoretically, yes, you know, it would make sense. But, yeah, for all the reasons Kasami said, Eskel just decided not to. Cool, thanks. Okay, um, since we do have some questions here going before any uh, before we start practice suits, anyone have any other questions? I realized I have to really yeah, stop my phone. Real bad in our comrade. Might not take this. Can we use, um, for example, medium anvil?
Uh, didn't quite catch that. Can you say again? Sorry. Uh, how liberal can be used medium anvils? Oh, gotcha. Um, so, yeah, for the different types of anvils, um, as far as how liberal we can be with them, you know, as long as we have um, a substantial amount of green, you know, as long as we don't have, like, 100 left out of our 500, um, go ahead and, and use one, like I said, as long as you're uh, in a platoon or in a squad, um, and then recraft it. That's that's basically all there is there is to that. You're free to use them uh, as long as they're helping your team, um, and we have the resources to support it. Which because it's green, it's basically always yes. Um, the only I guess other thing I will say there is try not to uh, use them too fast. That the that you using them doesn't outpace the uh, amount of time it takes to recraft them. So for medium anvils, like you asked about, it's a two minute duration uh, between each new one that, that comes in. So if you use two heavy anvils within 30 seconds, then you and all the other officers that are online are gonna have to wait at, you know, the next a minute and 40 seconds uh, before you can use another one. So it's, it's a lot of these, these, these policies here are, are very, very flexible, right? It depends on what the map looks like, depends on who's online of our of our officers um you know all that stuff but as as far as using them goes you know if you have a good use for, use for it use it um so i hope that answers your question there thank you and the other question is um kind of following up that question so for example if i come online and see um we have only one heavy anvil should i take the place of someone else and craft a half anvil yes yeah short answer yes um you know it's it's always better if the person using them remembers to recraft but you know i've done it sometimes other officers do it as well i'm sure we're in the middle of of you know a heavy alert and we're we're focusing on leading and so we drop the anvil we want to use and then we forget to recraft so it's also a team game you know so so absolutely yes if you if you see anvils or, or modules or whatever aren't up to par, aren't uh, aren't up to the amount that we need them, definitely recraft them and, and help us out. Since you mentioned modules there, Horace, with the modules, we keep them at full capacity. So when you hit craft, it does five at a time. So we generally try not to hit that craft button. It's 55 or under, because then at that point, you're kind of wasting. Because if you do it at 56 or 57 or 58, you're kind of wasting two, three, four modules that could have been crafted. So those keep half an eye on. It's not that big of a deal if it goes down to 20. So what? We'll still catch it up very, very quickly. But generally, unless it's under 55, we don't recraft them. I have a question on the Bastion. Go for it. So there's the fleet carrier for Araxis, and then there's the four pieces underneath it, which look like they're... Are these the components that it's referring to when it says you must have the components to craft? Yes. Yep. Okay, so you need to have one of one for everything in this Araxis only section in order to call one Bastion. Yep, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And the entire crafting takes, I believe, 49 hours between the different pieces in the Bastion at the end. It's, it's a 49-hour craft, I believe, so it takes a while, so... Generally, we like to keep those pieces flowing as much as possible, so, for, so when the Bastion's ready, it's ready, because it does take such a long time. Um, what is the difference, now that you pointed it out, what's the difference between Global and Araxis? I mean, obviously the Araxis is Bastion stuff, but, I mean, isn't that the planet we're on? Yeah, so, um, as far as things actually matter, the difference is nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay. Um, the, you know, they're both used on a specific continent. Um, it just kind of helps to categorize things. I've, I've never seen, you know, any any difference between them as far as categorization goes, um, but it just helps to kind of have a line between our, our deployable assets and then the Bastion itself, along with the expeditions and such. That might change in the future, who knows? Maybe we'll add stuff to the armory at some point and then the matter a bit more, but for now it, it doesn't mean anything realistically. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and call it here. We're going to start doing some practice time and then we'll have time for uh, a new Q&A at the end. So if I could have 
like I said, everyone open up their map screen. Uh, we're going to try practicing dropping some modules. We have quite a few leads here. Um, so, you know, we'll go through a few modules here, but I do want to get everyone um, some practice in. And, you know, we'll, we always have lots of green and we'll get them back up to, uh, to 60 in a bit. But it's good to have some practice while we're here so you can ask some questions. So, if everyone's on their map screen, if I can get you looking towards what's a good place that maybe doesn't already have some. Let's look at Havar Tech Plant, Platoon Waypoint. So if all of our Broodlords and up who maybe haven't had uh, the pleasure of dropping some modules before can look that way, if you hover over that hex and right click, go all the way down to Module Assets, it'll bring you up a list of modules that you can deploy. Um, and just for practice sake, feel free to pick anyone that you want, but for uh, best practice, at a base like a tech plant, which does have access to the uh, aircraft discounts, the heavy and the light, um, those two are going to be the most useful ones. Different bases have access, or they uh, are able to have different modules placed, depending on what type of base it is. Um, and so it's always good to have a few bases that, you know, even if they're not on our front and directly in the fighting, it's good to have those those discounts up and ready so that whenever people feel like pulling Belks or, or Galaxies or ESFs, um, they're, they're ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Heavy Aircraft Discount myself. Um, and if the Broodlords, uh, maybe Hive Lords who haven't had a chance to use Bonds before, pick anyone from that and it's literally just just get into the, the practice using one, so go ahead and do that now. I want to see a whole bunch of, of modules light up. Um, and then the thing to note while you guys are doing that, if you look on the bottom right of the map screen uh, while you're hovering over the tech plant, you'll see the active modules and also the duration that they are uh, available. The maximum time that a module can be active is 60 minutes, so almost a full alert, two-thirds of alert, um, and trying to place a module further than 60 minutes um, will just waste a module, basically. So um, three modules, a single module provides 20 minutes of time for a discount or upgrade, like the infantry health regen. Um, so you can place three at any hex um, and then wait 20 minutes before you place another one, basically, is how that works. Um, yeah, so really happy to see people placing a whole bunch of modules. We've got uh, all eight of them. Some of them are maxed out, some of them are not. So feel happy free to keep looking at that. Um, but that's basically how that works. That's that's how the modules work. Um, now on Tech Plant, on Havar Tech Plant, everyone who goes there will have 30% discount on every type of vehicle, because we have all, all eight modules installed. Uh, if there's a fight that happens to be a Tech Plant, people will have the infantry health regen, which will be nice. Um, and they'll also have their turrets upgraded uh, the turrets upgrades are, you know, used very, very rarely, um, if at all. Um, just because I believe one of them, I think last time I hopped into a turret with, with this upgrade active, uh, it actually makes it a little bit harder to see with the, the heat uh, sights, but um, it's there, and uh, feel free to experiment with it. But um, yeah, that's how that works. For the last part of the, well, that's okay. So actually one other note about modules um, in terms of when you want to use them, um, especially for officers that are here. When you are, say, have finished capping a base, um, say, you know, we're on defense right now, but have our data bank one base over, we're about to, to get the defense on that. And then, you know, Quartz Ridge is definitely a nice base to have on Indar. So we'd want to go up there, but you know we'll also want a whole bunch of, of Sunders and maybe some Sky Guards as well. Portridge is fairly open. Um, and so we'll want some discounts there. And so as you're capturing a base, it's always a nice idea to place down a few discounts, especially if you plan on, on asking your platoon to pull some vehicles um, right before you actually go to the base itself, right before people start pulling vehicles. Uh, you'll get your best use out of them. Okay. Very last thing that I'm going to do, and this is going to be a little bit more active. I see people are around the map, so if you'd like to participate, um, we're going to be getting, getting together here. I'm going to go to one base, which is not this base, unfortunately. It doesn't have what I'm looking for. Um, and I just want people to see a, um, 
a, a kind of best practice use of a heavy anvil um, that isn't just dropping it anywhere on the map when you know you could just pull it from the vehicle terminal. So if everyone has, wants to hit their U keys and join me, we are going to go to a base with a tower. And some of you, most of you probably will know what I mean by that. The question is, do we actually have one right now? Or are we going to have to... Yeah, for example. Perfect. Okay, yep. So let's go ahead and redeploy to Paris Amp Station. We're all here. If everyone wants to get some practice in, let's get some beacons up for our squads. shellor has got one for Alpha. Perfect. And I can get everyone, once you get here, to start running over to Platoon Waypoint. And the SA alert. We're about to wrap up here, so perfect timing. Alright, wait a second here for people to get here. Uh, I will say for everybody's uh, safety in a moment, I will ask you to vacate the tower. I wouldn't want anyone to get squished. Okay, looks like most of you are here. So, towers. Very, very handy places for anvils. Um, they're highly defensible locations. You can drop an anvil straight into one. Uh, it's defensible enough that you can usually just go right to the anvil and hit the terminal, spawn one without anyone firing directly on you. They're fairly secretive, you know, people don't see them right away when they enter the map, or the base rather. Um, so they're nice places. And yeah, I'll just ask you guys to keep the fire down so we can uh, keep doing this. So, and this, I'm going to get you guys to kind of practice on your own after this training here. Um, feel free to practice with some light animals and stuff. They take one second to craft, they're super easy to recraft in terms of resources. Um, but use the light uh, anvils in case you want to, or anytime you want to practice just dropping anvils and kind of see what they're like. I'm going to practice with a heavy anvil for this one so you guys can see what it's like. I've got ammo for you. So I, the way that these are going to work, again, I'm kind of using my mini-map like I was saying earlier in the training. If you hit left alt, that frees your mouse up from the screen when you're just, you know, in a base, spawned in. Uh, frees up your mouse and you can go over to the mini-map and then right click just like you would on the regular map screen to uh, do waypoints or uh, place modules even or like I'm about to do place an anvil. For everyone who hasn't done this before, the way that you want to make sure that an anvil actually gets placed inside the tower, you can kind of see the box inside the tower kind of between uh, alpha and uh, bravo waypoints. I'll actually just remove bravo here, it does actually cluttering it up. You can kind of see that box that's in there. That's the opening for the tower that faces the sky. And in order to make sure your anvil actually fits in there, you want to right click right in the center of that and then uh, hit your anvil's uh, drop down menu. Choose whichever anvil you need and then watch it come down. Like so. So here it comes down, dropping from the sky. Here we go. So, you guys are going to drop this. As soon as it drops, you guys are going to want to run to the terminal. You'll hit a uh, hit E on this kind of screen terminal that I'm looking at now. You'll get the option for a couple of different things. That was a medium mantle somehow, so I'm going to go ahead and spawn something else. I'll ask you guys to hold back away. Like I said, I don't want you guys, anybody getting squished. Oh, we have a heavy... Okay, someone did it in place one, and we also have a medium anvil. Perfect. Okay, so yeah, the thunder that you guys see right now, that's the result of our heavy anvil. And there it is deploying. And I'll just get rid of this anvil as well. Wait, you can deploy that? Is that can deploy? Yeah. Yeah, just, it yeah, was just sitting on top of the, the other anvil, so it stays like that. Stays like that. Yeah. yeah. Also note that when an anvil is dropped, it is extremely vulnerable to enemy fire and watch it when you drop it because friendlies will run up and steal it. So make sure you are close enough to pick it up unless you I've have a range with somebody you. else. Hey, you know, Charlie 2, I'm going to drop a heavy anvil right next to you. Can you grab it and spawn something? You know, communicate because they're they're apt to be stolen by friendlies and they're apt to be killed by enemies. So just watch where and, and when you're dropping those anvils. 
Is this how you get a Sunday in the basement of the containment site? In the basement of what? <laughs> what? The other night, yeah, the other dropping night, it, it right in. Yeah. It was in the basement oh, of the uh, containment site. I see. Um, in the end point, in the end point thing. That dead Sunday. No, I don't think so. That's yes, probably a glitch. You can the anvil it in. Can't and you can handle it down the center, but it will get killed if the, uh... As soon as the siphon comes on, though, yeah, it's done. Yeah, as soon as the right. siphon comes back on. There's a bunch of interesting places you can place a, a Sunday using a heavy anvil. Not all of them are good, but a lot of them are interesting. Ads on Biolabs. That's cool. Park a Cobalt Sunday up there. Fun stuff. Oh, Yep. Uh, split Peak as well. There's a kind of cliff or mountain hill uh, just kind of north of the A point, and you can handle a Sunday there for easy access. You can drive a Sunday up to that point, but it's really long and winding it and you know, hard to get to. Um, so most lazy, easily you can handle a Sunday there, and it's really nice. So if you have access to the anvils, what you do with them is kind of up to you. Just build, replace them if you build them, and do not build them to the point where we run out of greenium. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So yeah, that's kind of uh, a lot of the armory there, guys. Uh, hope that was useful. We're going to start moving into the Q&A here. Um, so if anybody has any questions, feel free. But um, that is the end of the actual training portion. Um, so if that was all you wanted, you are free to go. Go ahead and join the alert. Now we're going to have to go, and uh, thank you all for coming.